Hello dear viewers, myself Nasir and you are watching Mr. Zali's YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about structure of a fish pond in which we will look upon embankment or dike formation. The components of an embankment or dike are base of dike, top or crown of the dike, side slope of, of the dike as well as the height of the dike and at the end we will look upon precautionary measures for a dike construction. What is an embankment or dike? A dike is defined variously as means to say we have so many definitions of a dike we can define it in a unique way that an embankment for controlling or holding back the water means to say if you are creating a pond for fish uh, fishes that means to say you have to hold back these water in a confined area a bank of earth formed of material excavated means to say you can also uh, make a dugout pond or excavate a particular land or a causeway means to say there are type of uh, fish cultures means to say you can culture fish on a raceway in which water continuously flows a low wall or fence of earth or stone for dividing or enclosing a land means to say you will have to cover a land uh, to keep the water in that confined area that will be used for embankment or dike a dike is the most important part of a pond farm what you have to keep in mind that it should be constructed with a great care it is to hold water at a definite level means to say you have to maintain the water level for the culturing of fish it also serves as a path to approach the desired sports of the aqua farm or fish farm means to say if you want to uh, move at a certain place in a pond uh, you have to uh, you have to change your clothes or uh, some other ways to enter into the uh, farm but if you have constructed a dike or embankment then you can move over the embankment or dike to reach that place or particular spot so quantity of earth required per hectare for the construction of dikes for a 4 hectare pound it is estimated to be 2500 to 4000 meter cube area means to say uh, the area is also defined for construction of the embankment or dike and next are the components of the dike uh, and the first one is base of dike it means to say the ground on which the dike is to be built is sandy gravelly or marshy it, then it will be necessary to build a concrete or clay core in the center of the dam means to say the ground is not proper or the ground is not uh, able to hold the water level or water table to a certain level so therefore to make a pond suitable for culturing of fish you have to maintain the water at a certain level and if the uh, area is uh, containing soil of sandy or gravelly type or marshy type then it will not be suitable uh, for culturing of fish pond so if the soil that composes gam is impervious then of course such a core is not necessary means the sandy clay is the best material for the construction of dikes then you will not need to make uh, concrete cores in the center or in the base of the dike and the next is second component of the embankment of dike is top or crown width Dikes are built with uh, uh, compacted layers of soil means to say compact layers of soils are necessary to hold the water table. The soil should be applied in 20 cm layer means to say a thick wall of soil is prepared with each layer being well packed with heavy machinery before the next is laid over means to say that whole uh, layers are confined and well built so that they can hold the water table up to a certain level. The width of crown must be at least 1 meter, uh, not less than that is uh, considered uh, good for the construction of a dike. At almost, one uh, almost 1 meter is uh, necessary. So next, uh, the construction of the uh, embankment requires side slopes. It uh, means that you have prepared uh, base, then you have prepared uh, its, uh, after preparing base, you have then prepared its top or crown and then you will have to prepare side slopes for the construction of the fish pond a dike has two faces one is from the uh, wet side and the other is from the dry side the wet side is uh, always the inner side and the outer side will always be the dry side so it says that the inner side slope is directed towards water while the opposite side or cutter shape remains dry that is not facing towards the water that is why it remains always dry the slope of dike is very important as it determines the resistance of dike to erosion by the waves and rain means to say when there comes uh, heavy rains or heavy rainfalls or flood is then there are chances of uh, leaching or erosion of the side slopes the slopes of the uh, for inside and outside depend on the height of the dike and quality of the soil 
if the quality of good uh, if the quality of the soil is good then you will not uh, need to make so, so much huge dikes or side slopes and uh, then a simple uh, side slope is, in, is uh, enough for maintaining the water table the slope of the dike should be uh, uh, one ratio two and on the outside about uh, one ratio one that is uh, for a good quality soil and if the so soil quality is poor then a slope of one ratio three means to say one will be uh, outside and three will be inside to hold the water table together or that can be either three from the outside or one from the inside that will be good enough to support the dike and the height of the dike is also important the height of dike must be up some 30 centimeter above the water level means to say if the height of the dike is not certain uh, to a certain level uh, various species live in different uh, regions of the world means some are ground uh, bottom feeders some are mid-range feeders and some are uh, surface feeders so according to their nature you have to select the dike uh, height of the dike as well for your pond construction so in case of small ponds 30 centimeters is enough but if you are uh, creating a larger ponds for uh, cultivation at a larger area or at a larger uh, production rate then you will have to create a 50 centimeter height dike so uh, it will prevent erosion and it will also help you to uh, maintain a good water level or water table. Planting of grass is also recommended on either side which will bind the soil. Means to say uh, grasses will also help to uh, prevent the uh, dike destruction. Planting of trees however is not recommended on the dike since the roots would weaken and break the dikes. For ponds that are built near the pastures where animals live or eat or wander about that area will be nasty or that can uh, cause some serious damage to your fish ponds. And the last uh, and the not the least uh, topic is precautions for dike construction. A site of all facilities should be selected means to say where you can easily transport or you can purchase material for your fish pond or you can also purchase feed from uh, the nearby areas. A good quality soil should be selected that will reduce overall cost of the production culture means to say a good quality soil will uh, not be easily eroded and will not uh, lose your pond as early as possible a barbed fence or a hedge therefore should be uh, put around the fish farm when there are animals nearby your fish pond so you have to always make sure that uh, your pond is fenced proper when there are animals or pastures nearby your farm during construction of dikes Provision should be kept in mind for the installation of inlets and outlets pipes and spaces for the construction of mocks. So for inlets and outlets you have to provide special area or uh, to make sure that inlets and outlets uh, could easily be installed in your fish farm. So that was the topic for today. Hope so you enjoyed and learned it a lot. We will meet you in the next video. Till then, peace out.